Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fran, I'm from Venezuela. And today we are going to be watching a video called Seven Ways British and American Restaurants Are Very Different. Curious to see, like, how, how different can they be? But let's see it and comment, like, subscribe, and start. To some degree, there'll be places in Britain that sell Chicago-style pizza, even though it's nothing like it. Or even in my birthplace of Cleethorpes, Chicago-style yeah. burgers, whatever okay. that is. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> What's she can Hello, I'm about? Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos <laughs> pertains to restaurants. And because okay. food is involved, yes. restaurants happen to be a kind of central hub for where British and American yes. differences play Everyone out more broadly. It. Because we see differences in not just the food, but the terminology that's used and some of the customs oh. that are practiced and the practices that are customed. And of course, the mere concept of a restaurant, I don't know why I'm doing that. The mere it's concept different? of a restaurant is universal. But the way that oh. they are presented to and used by Brits and Americans is subtly and sometimes not so subtly different. And okay. so here are seven ways so in curious. which British and American restaurants are very different. For Brits moving Service. to or even visiting the United States of America, one of the biggest culture shocks, at least for me, was the kind of round-the-clock attention that servers pay to their customers. What's that? Yeah. Your glass of water is empty. We can't be having that. <laughs> Yes. American servers See? come right on over, minus the whistling sound, usually. And in between <laughs> that and the bite of your broccoli, American wait staff will be over just to simply ask, how's that is food tasting? Okay? Yeah. Can I get How you anything else? Okay? Golly gee, that's a nice accent. Which part of Australia are you from? Those kind of questions. <laughs> Whereas British wait staff are staff that, you know, wait. Wait to come over until you're all done. And part of this... Wait, is that where the word waiter comes from? Like, they're just the, the waiter because they're constantly there waiting for you to like call them and ask for stuff i've never thought of that but maybe maybe waiter like the word um, a waiter comes from that i don't know this is tied to the notion of tips and tipping in britain contrary yeah. to popular belief servers do make a bulk of their income from tips but unlike in america tipping is voluntary and not oh okay i was gonna say because i don't think i i know that um in in europe and in the uk i don't think that you're i don't know if they have like a good tipping culture um, well, not, I don't know if it's a thing. Like, I wouldn't know, like, whether or not to tip. Um, because I'm, I'm, like, for me, like, I, I, I'm used to tipping. Like, you, if you go to a place, like, uh, at a server, at a restaurant, at a bar, like, you have to tip, you know, the workers. But, um, from my understanding, I don't think, like, that's a big thing in other parts of the world, especially in Europe and the UK. So I was curious, like, if you go to a restaurant, is it normal for you to, like, tip waiters? Are they expecting you to tip them? Or it's just, like, don't do that here. Like, we like we get paid enough. Like, it's not a thing. So I'm like, I don't know. Like, that's, that's weird. That's all expected. A lot of Brits who come to the United States, myself included, don't know this at first. In my case, I even it's asked the waiter around. how much I should tip. So I gave her the 75% she recommended and moved on. <laughs> of course, with time, I came to learn that the expected amount here in the United States of America America yeah, is 15 to 20 percent of your bill yeah. and or check will come onto terminology later. It's often been noted, especially within the fast food industry, that portion sizes in the United in a, States of America are, are much larger than the European yes, counterparts. But often, depending on where you go, this can also be true of sit-down restaurants. One of the first major American sit-down chain restaurants that I visited yes. was a little place called Applebee's. And at the likes of Applebee's, yeah. but also the Olive Garden or TGI Friday or any number of yes. other chains, your appetizer almost feels like a main it's course a, slash yes, entree. Again, terminologies plate. later. And by the time that the actual main course arrives, you eat it merely out of politeness while pretending that this is all fine. And then, this is the really <laughs> funny bit, they ask the you drinks? if you want to see the dessert menu. And of course oh, you okay. can't say no because you're addicted to cheesecake. And that's always humongous and rich as opposed to humongous and poor, which is what you are when you leave the restaurant. Except that cheap <laughs> joke doesn't quite work because American food on Why? the whole is actually cheaper compared to the food served in Britain, which is oh, partially really? how you account for the portion size difference. Now, after a while, I noticed that there were Americans all around me that instead of plowing through this mountain of calories in one sitting, answered yes to what was then an unfamiliar question to me. What, what is it? 
That's right. Oh, it's you completely need a box. normal in the United States of yeah, America to, to have your food boxed at the end of the meal with the intention yes. of you taking it home and refrigerating it's it a, or just eat it later that UK. night if you're feeling lucky. And of course, now that makes sense, right? I mean, you've paid your money for that food. You want to get your yes. money's worth. But on top of that, it cuts it. down on waste. But at first, just because of what I was used to back home, it seemed weird to be taking leftovers home from a restaurant. Really? In Britain, as evidenced by this BBC article from a few years back, we've historically felt Too embarrassed even to ask for a box or a doggy bag because we are I don't know I haven't a clue why actually either way I think leftovers are great to the extent that I have yes. Indian food for breakfast don't judge me buffet I, I have to say it is I mean I could I could tell yeah you it's I don't know why but it, you, you can get embarrassed I mean it's a normal it's a normal sort of like I, I don't think that's weird um it is, I don't know, it's weird, I think, the fact that he thinks, like, it's a weird where in that, in America, sort of, like, normal, because I think it's, it can be a little bit embarrassing, you know, like, can I get this to go? But I don't know why, because it's, like, a normal thing. I don't think we should feel embarrassed, you know, as, you know, I pay for this food, and it's, it's a lot, you know, like, I don't know, my eyes were bigger than my stomach, I don't know, can I get this to go? I'm paying for it, like, I'm not committing a crime, it's, it's fine. And I think it's better, um, if you actually, like, order if you if you don't order to go if you just like ask for them to like can you please like um get get, get this in a box because you know besides of you like paying for it again it's less wasteful i hate to waste food and i think we as like a society and as a culture we have to like do better about waste because you know there's it's it sucks you know like if you b barely have touched your your meal or you have like half of it like it's just a lot and it would be a shame to like get get this like no yeah just throw it in, in the trash you know like no don't do that like ask for it to go again i i don't think i, I can understand the feeling of it like being a bit a bit um like embarrassing but i don't know why we feel embarrassed to ask for things like we shouldn't but i get i get why but it's weird that we actually like do feel embarrassed for it Aside from the fact that America seems to be just a tad more into them than Britain, there's an aspect of the buffet-going experience that differs greatly between the two countries. Where okay, I was from, depending how? on the buffet in question, I almost got the impression that it was rude to the kitchen staff to ask for a new plate when you're going up for seconds. In other words, whenever I went for, say, a Chinese buffet, I would go up, get my plate, scoop on all the food, go back to my table, realise that I am unrelentingly gluttonous, and then go back up for <laughs> seconds using the same plate. It made me feel good that while devouring lots of solids, i done a solid to the kitchen staff. That could be taken so many ways. Whereas once I moved to the United States, I realized that this was considered either weird or unhygienic. <laughs> At American buffets, customers are expected to get a new, cleaner plate when they go up for seconds because this is a measure seen at preventing cross-contamination. Yeah. But I have to say, after practicing both methods, neither has caused me any personal problems. Yeah. But while we're on the subject... I was going to say, like, how, how I, I get it, but, like, I want to know, like, statistics, like, how like how, how much cross-contamination can be because you're eating, like, you're the same person. You're just eating the same thing. But I think maybe it's because, like, the, 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 the thongs or the thing that they're like the the spoons where they're serving you the food like they can touch the actual plate and maybe that's why they are so careful but I, i'm with him like i don't think it's, it's either way honestly to chinese food that brings us on to this I think it's fair to say ethnic that in both food. Britain and America, ethnic food or food that is usually associated with a country Another that culture. is not this one is extremely yeah. popular. And to varying yes. degrees, no matter if you're talking about the United States or Britain, the same countries are often represented at the dinner table. Off the top of sure. my head, the big one like is Chinese. Chinese food. Except you guessed it, British Italian? Chinese food and American Chinese are food different. is vastly different. Yeah. In Britain, Chinese food is often spicy, sometimes curry-based. In the US, on the other hand, Chinese food tends to be centered around standalone fried meats, usually of the chicken variety. Yes, now, right. these are not entirely absent from Britain, but one way that America differentiates itself is that its Chinese food tends to be a lot sweeter than in Britain. But whichever really? way you slice it, I planned that. Both British and American Chinese cuisine is a modified version of what actual Chinese people eat in China. Yes. And this seems to be a common theme that actually unites Britain and America. Take, for example, Indian food. While it should be pointed out that Indian food is more widely eaten in Britain than in the United States, and that in my experience, certain Indian curries because tend to be spicier than their American counterparts, neither is anywhere near as spicy as authentic Indian. Korean? On the other hand, oh, in terms okay. of everything I just said there, Almost the exact opposite is true of Mexican food. 
America, by virtue of its neighborly status with Mexico, eats way more Mexican food than Britain does. Yes. Even if, by all accounts, tacos and the like have started to make waves in Britain. But even oh. America's version of Mexican food is often a departure from what's eaten south of the border, with authentic Mexican food often less spicy than Americans are used to. And it was in the restaurants of America Probably. that I got a first-hand feel for how America likes to modify the national dishes of other countries to create what amounts to their own version because yes. they even do this with english cuisine and that brings us on to this well yeah be before we get into it i have to say um you know he has a really good point but also i think that's um true for basically every single like place and culture in the world especially chinese um i'm gonna put that example because i think you know there's a lot of like chinese immigrants all over the world and it's it, it has been like way for like a million years um but chinese food it differs vastly depending on where you're where, and in what part of the world you're from like obviously in china like um it's it's very different it's obviously what is like the real thing it's it's you know it's chinese food it's what I, they actually eat but if you've never been to china and you actually like check out what they eat um it's chances are that you're it's going to be completely different from what you know as chinese food it doesn't matter like in what part of the world you are because chinese immigrants i think they're very Although probably like that's a thing for like all immigrants and all cultures. Um, once they immigrated to like different countries, like they had to like, I think, make adjustments, right? You know, maybe there's some ingredients that they couldn't get or maybe just sort of like adjust things. Um, to like for for like the people in that country to actually like like their food like especially if they um you know own restaurants like it's gonna be like people people don't want to eat this so we have to like modify it to make it more palatable um so chinese food i think it's something that seriously it just varies so much from like in what country you are um and something that can be like a staple like a chinese food staple like in the country like where where you're from Maybe you go to another country and it's, it's not even a thing um, or it is completely different because they just like adjust it so much that it's like, wait, so my whole life has been a lie. Like this is Chinese food. This isn't really like what I like what um, it can be quite a shock. Um, and I think, again, like I put that example because I think um, it's 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 been a thing. But I think it also happens with a lot with like um, Indian food. Um, and probably like some other things. Um, but also like the Mexican, it's funny that he was like, Mexican food is just sort of like starting to um, sort of like be be known when like Mexican food, I think is such a, is such a like a staple that it's weird that um, in the UK apparently it's not, it's something that's in, like a newer thing. Then maybe it makes sense, you know, because they, um, you know, America and Mexico are our neighbors and India and um, the UK, you know, they had they had ties. So it makes sense for like for like Indian food to be more popular in the UK as in and in the other way around. Like it's in the in the US, it's maybe not that popular or Indian food is not that popular, but Mexican food, it is very popular because, you know, they're neighbors. So, you know, again, really good point. If you were to ask me to name three dishes from both countries, off the top of my head, I would say this. For Britain, Burger? fish and oh. chips, Sunday roast, and a full English breakfast. For America, okay. hamburgers, hot yeah. dogs, and pizza. And yes, I realize that all of those have disputed or undisputed <laughs> origins in Germany yes. and Italy, but over time they have become synonymous with the United States. But to a yes, lesser degree, and because of American influence, hamburgers, hot dogs, and pizza can all be found in like restaurants in the UK. And I'm sure again, to some like, degree they'll be that's, placed... Yeah, that's like, um, you can get hot dogs, pizza, pizza, and burgers like everywhere. Like it doesn't matter like in what country and what corner of the world you're are like you can get those those things those are like basic things but i get that we sort of like associate them with america um as you know as i think mean, for you we associate those things with like oh yeah national usa foods but like you can get those anywhere <laughs> This is in Britain that sells Chicago style pizza, even though it's nothing like it. Or even in my birthplace of Cleethorpes, Chicago yeah. style What's burgers, Chicago burger? whatever that is. I, but in yeah, reverse, whenever know. America tries to replicate popular British dishes, it's sort like of like what? being in an alternate universe. It's yeah. great, but it's different. Very rarely do you get fish and chips where the chips slash fries are thick cut and greasy and the fish is singular <laughs> and large. Instead, you usually get three or four smaller pieces of fish that are usually a tad saltier than what you'd expect back home. Oh, oh and did I mention there's no mushy peas? Honestly, it's like being in the south of England. Was and in terms of the other two, the Sunday roast and the full English breakfast, well, I found those a lot harder to come by in the US than fish and chips. Even at those pubs that, you know, every state has that purport to be authentically British. 
And lastly, we can't talk about British versus American restaurant differences without talking about the terminology. You see, it's one thing to get your food boxed at the end of a sit-down meal, but many of us <laughs> yes. might like to take it home without sitting down in the restaurant in the first place. In Too Britain, cool. I always knew this as getting takeaway, which is why okay. I was profoundly confused when I worked in an American office environment, and they talked about the key takeaways from the meeting. I thought I was getting curry and chips. In America, this is referred to as takeout or sometimes carry out. And regardless of portion size, we can't even agree on what to call each meal. In the US, for the most part, the meal so immediately easy. preceding the main meal is usually known as an appetizer. In Britain, what? I always refer to this as a oh, starter. But some, as the French do, might call it an entree. And oh, this is where fancy. things get confusing because Americans and Canadians alike use the word entree to mean the main meal. For us, the main meal is usually known as the main course. If it's a Sunday roast, that main course will include a Yorkshire a pudding. Roast. And this is where things get doubly confusing because we in Britain also use the word pudding as a catch-all term for dessert. In fairness, we do also interchangeably use the word dessert. In America, the word pudding is more specific and the catch-all term has been deserted in favor of dessert. And the implement <laughs> Yeah. with which we eat this food, i.e. the knife, fork and spoon, is known collectively in the United States as silverware, whereas this word, what? when used in Britain, would pertain more to ornate metal plates or perhaps metallic uh, jobs what or so sports what's a knife trophies. And a, spoon? a lot of the time, instead, we'll collectively oh, refer to knives, forks and spoons as cutlery. And as we all know, it's very rude to leave a restaurant without paying. And this is why we ask for the bill, or at least we do in Britain. Because most of the time here in the US, Americans will ask for the check. And that's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you've been to restaurants in both countries and what some of your observations were. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And don't yeah. forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a big <laughs> Applebee's portion sized shout out to my patrons who a make big these Applebee's. videos possible. Portion, you would yes, like to support Lost in the Pond, you can so do so big. today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of like a lot of food for thought, um, <laughs> if, if I do say so myself. Um, I think there's um, a lot of um, yeah, a lot of interesting things. Um, the, the pudding thing, I don't really get. I know that they, they have food that's uh, I think is a your tribe pudding. And it is, it is like a savory thing. It's, it's, you know, it's a, like, um, a main entry, um, a main course. Um, but it's weird to me, like pudding, just pudding is, it's the dessert. It's some, like a mushy dessert. It's so weird to, for me to think of like, um, a pudding that's, you know, it's a, it's an actual meal and not a dessert. That's so, like, it would not be weird to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, he has a, a lot of, a lot of interesting points. Um, it, it's really, it's really funny. Um, because I, I think probably the one, the ones that are like more like different, it's again, it's the terminology. Um, because I can, I can understand like people looking at you weird if you're um i don't know like if you ask for the cutlery and they're gonna be like the what i mean why are you why are you like referring to i don't know it's it's weird but i have to say um again like uk like they use more like fancier words i don't know how to explain it but everything is more um yeah like fancier um they they have like proper terms for stuff um and and one thing i think probably like the biggest shock is um the portion sizes, you know, portion sizes, American portion sizes are definitely like, they're so big. Um, I don't think that you're expecting, you're expecting it for, you know, <laughs> you're not prepared for it because they are so big um, that I, I, you know, it's, if you're not used to it, 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 it's definitely like a culture shock if you're not from there um, and you like, you're used to like smaller portions. And I'm not, I don't, I don't mean like, oh, you're like, usually um, at gourmet like restaurants, um, you know, they have like smaller portions. Um, but in normal restaurants in many different countries, it's like normal sizes, you know, you don't get like a gigantic plate. Um, and the US in chains, because I think it's the thing about chain restaurants, they definitely like they have, they have so much like the, those portions are, are so big. I don't know how, like, why is that a thing? I don't know why they keep doing it. Because again, most people like they don't really eat that much. Or they just have to like order, give me, give me, I have to like take, take, take this home because it's so big. 
So I don't really know like why they do it and why how come they haven't changed it because um, people I most people don't really eat, eat like that much um, or you know if you if you look at the thing it's probably like maybe you're like super hungry like you're gonna eat like all of that but it's not like a thing that you're constantly if you're constantly like eating out you're gonna be constantly like finishing up that gigantic plate um, especially I think with drinks I think drinks is something that's really surprising like American drinks. Um, you know, in restaurants, they're so big. Like they're they have like these gigantic glasses, and it's like, why? How come? Like it's so like it's so big. Like drinks are the size of those drinks are so big. Um, so it's definitely a big culture shock, a very big impact. Um, but yeah, I we can be prayer. And the thing about the tipping culture, by the way, we have to like do something about it because it varies so much for like different cultures and different um, countries. That is like, oh my god, I don't know, just like pay, I think, I think probably because yes, I think we, um, I'm used to like always giving, you know, giving out tips, but I think it would be so good, like just imagine a world where like everything gets paid, uh, you know, everyone, like waiters um, and servers like get paid and they don't have to like constantly beg for like tips um, because you know that in America they usually like, don't get paid um, that much and the bulk of their salary and their bulk of their, well, their earnings, um, it's actually like tips and that's why they're constantly like checking up on you, but I know that some people find that annoying because you just want to like, I wouldn't enjoy my food in peace P please like give me some space but you know that they're only doing it because they they feel like they have to like earn the tip and they want you know they want you to please tip, tip me well because you know I'm um I, I don't get paid much um so again imagine like I think the, the way the UK does that is probably like, the way to go because it's like they get paid a normal salary that is enough to make it like a living wage um and the tip is just optional like nobody's gonna look at you like oh he's a terrible tipper um or he doesn't tip which is like very frowning upon in the u.s um they're gonna look at you like very you're, you're just gonna like be persona non grata if you like if you don't if you're not a good tipper if you don't tip well so i think the way to go is just like a tip is it should be that you know something extra that um if you're like willing to if like the the, the service was exceptional and you you definitely feel like they went beyond what's expected and you're like no you know what i feel like they really did earn, earn, earn their tip um it should be again it should be just if you want to but it shouldn't be like an obligatory thing like no it's mandatory um because those poor servers are not getting paid enough so uk definitely wins this round um but yeah that was it for today and i'll see you next time bye